the cylinders are you could have seen they have, they are these um, kind of a circular objects right but in 3d okay let me draw it slightly better so it's like a like a can of coke you know that's a cylindrical shape right uh, there are two important uh, dimensions of a cylinder so first you have the height of the cylinder which is just from the top to the bottom the height of the thing so that's one dimension and the other important dimension is the radius of the circular uh, top and the bottom so so a cylinder has a circular top and a circular bottom and the rate and these circles are the exact same they're the same radius and this radius is the other important property uh, so it's it's it will be good to see how these cylinders actually form so if you have a sheet of something a rectangular sheet let's say basically you can form a cylinder if you roll the edges together okay so if you roll this together you'll end up with the uh, with the cylinder now now it's interesting to see how the uh, length how the length uh, how the length and width of the rectangular uh, lead to the height and the radius of the cylinder so if you see this side of your rectangular sheet basically ends up being the height of your cylinder see uh, and this edge of the cylinder or of the rectangular sheet this ends up being the circumference of your circular parts okay so the top and the bottom so the circumference is basically equal to the length of this edge. So this edge length, you can say is two pi r, right? Circumference of a circle is given by two pi r, and that's the this side of the rectangular sheet. Okay, so, so this is good to know how a rectangular sheet ends up being a cylinder, and what's the relationship between the sides of the rectangular with the height and the radius of the cylinder. Okay, so now the volume of the cylinder is given by pi r square h okay so r the radius of the cylindrical of the cylinder and h is the height and then the other property again the surface area which i'll shorthand to s a is given by okay so it will be good to derive the surface area i think it's a good uh, process to learn so surface area is the sum of all these areas that you can see right so here you have, there are three areas to, to think about you have the circular top plus the circular bottom plus the curved edge right now the top and bottom these are circles and the areas of circle is just pi r square right so that's simple now what about the edged curve the curve edge right so this is basically the circular piece like so this is the if it's the can this is the area that you hold uh, in your in your hands right to hold the can so so this area is basically the area of this rectangular sheet that leads and gives you the cylinder right so for that you just need to multiply the length and the width of your rectangular sheet so which is 2 pi r times h okay uh, pi r square pi r square same quantity i can shorthand to 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h okay so again it will be good to memorize these two formulas your volume and your surface area lastly is the sphere so a sphere uh, occurs less frequently on the theory but it's just one property of the sphere that you need so sphere is just your circular round ball it's like a, like a tennis ball right that's your sphere so here the volume is given by so if the radius of the sphere is r the volume is given by four thirds pi r cube okay simple as that 
So these are the three um, rectangle. These are the three solid objects or uh, solid things that you need to uh, know for the GI. So your rectangular solids, your cylinders, and your squares. All right. Let's do a few problems um, on solid geometry. So first we have this one here. The height h of a cylinder is equal to the edge of a cube. Okay, so the height h is equal to the edge e. So I'm, I'm going to put some symbols for these. So h is the height and e is the edge of the cube. Okay, um, right? If the cylinder and cube have the same volume, okay, so they're saying the volume of the cylinder is equal to volume of the cube, then what is the radius of the cylinder? You need to find the radius, okay? All right, so let's plug in the formulas for volume of the cylinder and cube. So cylinder is pi r square h, and cube is just e cube, right? And now we can substitute that. We know your height is equal to h e, right? Now, <clears throat> So in questions like these, you always ask, should you replace H or E? So look at what you have in the answer. And you all, in the answer, you have all H. So you should replace E by H. So instead of E here, you put H. So H cubed, pi R square, H. All right, so one H here, three H's here, you'll be left with two H's. Pi R square. Right? Let's get rid of the pi on the left side. So we have H square over pi let's take square root of both sides we get radius equals h over root pi which is a here okay let's look at another quantitative comparison question which is slightly tricky but it's a nice trick Jack and Jill each roll a sheet of 9 by 12 paper to form a cylinder. All right, so you have a sheet of paper, dimensions are 9, 12, and you roll it to form a cylinder. Jack tapes the two 9 inches edges together. Jill tapes the two 12 inches edges together. Okay, and now you want to find is the volume of Jack's cylinder bigger or the volume of Jill's cylinder? So, so this is an important thing to know. When you have a rectangular sheet of paper, you can make cylinders two ways. So you can either take this edge, this edge, and roll it. So basically rolling it like this, right? Or you can take this edge and this edge and roll. Right? And both will give you, since the dimensions are different, 9 and 12 are different, they will give you different cylinders. So basically we have Jack's cylinder. If I draw that cylinder. And Jack's cylinder, Jack's case, he takes two 9 inches edges together. So the 9 inches edges are, are stitched together. So, so basically your height in this case is nine and the circumference of your, your top and the base would be 12. So important to know, this is not the radius, this is the circumference. All right, in Jill's case is flipped. So your height is 12 and your circumference is nine okay now the question is what's the deal with the volume pi r square h now one way to do this is basically to find out um, you know the height in both cases you can find the radius from from the circumference right you know the circumference is given by two pi r you know circumference is nine in this case it's 12 in this case you can solve and find r and you can plug in your h and r uh, in the volume formula find the volume for each case but there's a shortcut here and the shortcut is to realize is that in the volume formula for a cylinder, your radius term is squared, whereas h is not squared, h is just simply h. So what happens is that if you have a bigger radius, that overpowers a bigger height. 
and the reason being because your radius is being squared. So think about it just this way. So since you're squaring something has bigger effect than a regular linear increase. That's why the one with a higher radius okay, would give you a bigger volume. So in this case, the bigger uh, volume would be the jacks because here the circumference is 12 compared to 9 for Jill's case and a bigger circumference will give you a bigger radius, hence a bigger volume. So jack would have a higher volume or a bigger volume. Okay, so A would be the answer in this case. So, so this is a good, um, I guess, line of reasoning to know in general that whenever you have a square term or any higher power term, it will grow much bigger than a lesser power term. So here we have a squared power term and a term which has only a power of one. So an increase in R would give you more of a bang uh, in your volume rather than an increasing in, in H. Okay. If you you know if you somehow miss that fact, you can always go plug in your height and the radius. It's a bit more tedious, takes more math, but you arrive at the same answer. Right. Cool. So I hope uh, these three examples gave you a nice uh, nice view of the you know, types of problems you will see on on GRU and solid geometry. Yeah. Do more uh, problems from your balance book and that hopefully should prepare you for this section. Right? Thanks. Have a good one.